What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some more Classroom of the Elite. We are finally finishing Season 1, Episodes 11 and 12. Very, very excited. Uh, before we get into anything, I do want to let you guys know with the first and last episode of every season of every show on the channel, the full-length version, which is normally a Patreon exclusive, is available for free for everyone. So click that link in the top of the description. Come back here for the review once you're done with that. And if you do like that free full-length or do like that full-length, um, consider checking out that patreon great benefits great time great community um other than that we are at a crazy spot very excited to find out what happens with the with this test how it leads into season two um where these characters go what happens with the panty thief you know what i'm saying but don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you guys always know when i post over here on the dapper channel don't forget to leave a like let me know your thoughts in those comments down below i say we hop right on into this classroom of the elite episode 11 um what people commonly call fate is mostly their own stupidity which i could talk about that quote for a little bit but yes it's you know it's a very very deep quote i mean true i don't know who to trust in the show at any other point ayana koji it, it saddens her to say this because she she hates giving credit where credit's due all right we're moving the tents getting to work what's up ibuki is she gonna mention uh i assume her phone being stolen or whatever that was in her bag well, some people did. I would say a couple of people. I don't think Ayana Koji does. A lot of people are taken back by Ayana Koji's just straight up honesty all the time. Like, look at her. Oh, he. I did notice her hand was like that as well, but I didn't realize it was because she was burying something. What did he find? I don't know. I'm kind of like Horikita. I think everyone has a hidden devious side. You're an example. I wouldn't say you have a devious side, but you definitely have a hidden side. Gotta see if she has a fever. I need to be able to transfer Celsius to Fahrenheit. Damn, she's been hiding her sickness. Day six, it's only a week, right? So one more after this. Okay. Okay, I get it. He's right about that, but what is I know, what's his what's his goal here? I mean, technically he had it on the other side, but it looks very similar. Really? They both look that shade of green. <laughs> Muddy Kita, do not mess with her. Well, I mean, he did land on Ayano Koji. That's God damn, Horikita. I'm so mad I never get to know what Ayano Koji finds or hears until the end of the episode. What's going on? She is winded. She is... What does she have, COVID? She's going through it. She had her clothes off during her bath and she lost the card or someone stole it? Ah. Uh. 
Uh, it's the only thing I can think of. Well, I think she had her underwear on. Yeah, it was the card. That's probably the most surprised face I've seen on a Yato Koji this entire show, if I'm honest. He said, huh? So it's not suspicious. Damn. This is one of the very rare times Horikita's made a mistake. Oh, yeah. Especially the amount of pressure on her. You know, she's constantly thinking about her brother's, like, what her brother would tell her in situations like this. It literally must be eating at her. What did she see here? What did she think of? She thought her... S oh, smoke. Black smoke. A huge fire. She looks a little too shocked at this fire to be the one, yeah, to be the culprit. What the hell is going on? Who stole the panties? Who stole the phone? Who stole the card? Who caused the fire? At this point, if it was purely the panties, we could have suspect the boys wholeheartedly. But if it was this, where it goes to betraying or a traitor, then we have to suspect everyone. I think it goes beyond being horny if we're sabotaging the entire... She was just here a minute ago, not a good sign. He said he didn't want everything to be ruined because of a couple of small mistakes, you know. And he's always the happy-go-lucky kind of guy. He got, like, lost in himself for a minute there. Can I please get some answers I've been waiting for? And then Ayano Cody just slowly walks away into the midst of the forest, like, as we come to a flashback of him. Oh, with kids disappearing? The number of students decreasing. Now we're down to five. This is either like Made in Abyss, where he's the last to be experimented on, or it's like Battle Royale, where he's the best of them, so he's made it to the end. I'm very curious which one is it. So Ibuki's here, back at the spot where we first found her, which what she was burying something. Man, that would suck. Yeah. Getting like chills, being hot. Ooh, I hate that feeling of being super sick. Okay, Ibuki. I was not expecting this. Classroom of the Elite is turning up like this out of nowhere. And normally, I feel like Horikita could do this, but with her sickness... I do like how she has a lot of introspection. She is the first to critique herself. To criticize herself. Ibuki is mobile. She is quick. I thought Ibuki was actually going to be in... I, that's what I'm telling you. Can't trust anyone. The gut punch right to like the ribs, lungs. Your ass is out of breath. Your ass is winded. And she's knocked out. God damn. Damn it, she got distracted for a second. But was she thinking about Ayana Koji right there? What? I feel like now, knowing what I know, that Ibuki is the bad one, I feel like Ayano Koji stole her phone. And Ayano Koji is going to save the day. Ah, <sighs> this show.
I won't lie, we're ending this season off on episode 12, which I'm really excited about, but this quote is really good too. Genius lives only one story above madness in the building that is the brain. They do coincide. That's why the term mad genius is a thing, you know? So the thing that she buried is gone. A person is here with us. Maybe it's not gone. It's still there. Of course it's Katsuragi. I mean, C is working with A and Katsuragi and Ryuen. She gets in Ryu Ibuki's under Ryuen. And I don't even know if they're technically... She could be doing her own thing with Katsuragi, you know? I feel bad for Horikita. Sick. Got knocked out. Took a nap in the mud and ran. I do like how one of the reasons she's fighting through it so much is because she looks down on others. So she cannot be one who's weak while calling other people weak, you know? That's the true root of the issue. Once you even get that, he probably, one, won't acknowledge you. Two, it's not going to mean anything. I feel bad for her. Was he doing that with her to re-knock her out? I thought he was checking her pulse, but I guess you don't need both. I guess you just need one like that. He was like... Yeah, he did that for her own good to uh, get her some proper care and treatment. This, they never tell me what Yano Koji says, and it makes me so mad. They never do. Okay, Ryu wants us to make some crazy scene. Wait, he actually, yeah, he stayed on the island. We got a little peach fuzz and everything. Okay, so I'm about to get some, about to get some re revelations, we'll say right here. <laughs> Flashback, hell yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, he did that to go have Ibuki infiltrate Class D and have What's-His-Name infiltrate Class B. So it was all a part of the plan. God damn it. Really? On class A? Who is this guy? Let me see him. Saki and Nagi's faction who was bringing them down? Yahiko. I knew it wasn't Katsuragi. It was smart of them. Really? Interesting. Yeah, for someone who claims to hate hard work, right? He went through a... He went through a lot of it. This was actually really well planned out. Okay. Let's get these results. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's shocked. Ryuen, Katsuragi, everyone is shocked. Let me in on Ayano Koji's plan, please. Let me in on those plans. I need to know. Oh. Okay, Saki Yanagi, she planned all this out? That's the one. So he's the one who was talking to Ryuen and betraying them, you know? There's definitely discourse among them in Ichinose with their two mil points. Jesus Christ. Okay. 
I heard about that a couple episodes ago. 20 mil, right? This man got to get rid of that stubble. Enlighten me, Rewin, please. So, how? Oh, you can change them if they're knocked out, right? It would be like a viable reason. So when he brought her back to Chabashira, we switched leaders. Was that what happened? I completely forgot that was a rule. They mentioned that before. And one of ours being sick beyond consciousness is one of them. So they had to have the physical evidence of it. Yup, this man's had everything planned. That's why. Okay, Dirty got to clean off. This man really had... This is like some Kaguya from Kaguya Sama level plan. Okay, Mr. Ayano Koji. To be fair, if I had to guess Class A's leader, I also would have guessed Yahiko, but that's purely because he's the only other Class A I know that's not fucking Katsuragi, you know? It was from that point on. I do love how his strategies are flexible. Like, he's willing to do one thing, but if another thing arises, he'll switch up, you know? He's, adap he's adaptable. Please let me know. I want to know so bad. God damn it. Where'd you hear that from? If Ayano Koji... Uh, Hirata. Which Ayano Koji could have told Yusuke that. I love how Ayano Koji never takes the credit. He does. He's done like 15 things so far this season. And he hasn't taken the credit once. And especially for increasing her social status, making her so she can have allies in the future, giving her friends. Great move. Great move. I know. Really? For better or for worse? Oh, yeah. So that's why she's jealous, that she just is maskless. She's just who she is, no matter who cares, where Kushida can't be like that. And so this is what he's been, this is what she's been wanting to ask this whole time. Yeah. It's not gonna, it's not a dunno for me. It's like, yes, you are getting thrown off the ship. Uh oh, back at the theater. Some more Icarus. In order to be free, absolutely. Okay. I guess there's a certain point to that. Your father? Poor tragic Icarus. I love the relatability. I love how deep and philosophical the show is. And that's where that's where the difference is gonna lie. Uh, class C and Class A contract contents. Once Class C is fulfilled items 1 and 2 above, all students of Class A will each month transfer 20,000 private points to Ryuin. This contract will last until graduation. So this is where, no matter what happens, his plan is still pretty much succeeded, but he just hates people getting in his way. So this is where the target on Ayano Koji and class D is going to grow even bigger. That's what I'm saying. The plan he made in terms of increasing her social status is really, and she's having some great introspection as well, you know? <laughs> Grudgingly. That's what I'm saying. Hey. Just having you talk like this is already more than enough. She. People told me in the comments, even though she's a Sundere, is not going to be our main girl. Am I wrong about that? Like, I want her and Ayano Koji to get married and have 75 kids together. This is finally in his head. 
I got goosebumps right now. I love and hate how that little monologue was cut. That it I was interrupting. Fucking oh, that's such a great picture. Talk about some episodes. Talk about the end to a season. Talk about plans. Riwen, Katsuragi, Sakiyanagi, and Ayano Koji. Plans. Ibuki had a little sub plan in there. Kanada sub plan in there. Like, I, if if they can do this for me a couple of more times throughout this entire show where they just have some grand thing where I'm confused the entire time, but then have an episode where they show everything and I'm like, oh, oh, you know, the whole time I'll be, this show will be A-OK -okay by me. Like, I don't even know where to start. There's so much. I, I said it at the very end, but I, I didn't get to finish it. I love and hated that inner monologue at the end because one, I'm so glad we're finally in his head. I never get to go in his head as much as I would like to. So glad we're finally in his head. Two, I hate, that's what I loved about it. I hate that it was at a moment in which um, Horikita was not confessing anything crazy, but this was the nicest she's ever been and the most grateful she's ever been to us. And I would love to experience that a little bit more. But the way they did it was so smart because she's like finally opening up to us. And we're like, yes, she's opening up to us. And then we see Ayano Koji, who we're, is supposed to be like our relatability. Like he's our main character, that's our bud. We're living vicariously through him. And then for him, us, to be hearing her finally have some gratitude, for him to be like, yeah, but I don't like you. I don't like her. I don't like him. I don't like anyone. You guys can all die. I don't care who needs to die as long as I win. I'm like, God damn, Ayano Koji. God damn. But Rewen's plan, really smart. <laughs> like, really smart. Like, if Ayano Koji wasn't the GOAT, that would have worked flawlessly. Katsuragi's plan also and like Ryuen having the backup plan for like on top of that plan like oh my lord and then we have Ichinose who was talking about transferring buying your points over to the other class we got Kushida who was talking about why she's jealous of Horikita because Horikita is one of the rare ones who is truth and is herself no matter the situation which Kushida just can't be um I need to know more about Hirata, Yusuke, because he seems like he could have a couple of breaking points if shit does not go the way it is assumed or wants to go. Um, I'm really interested in Sakianagi and her faction because she's willing to deteriorate Class A's points for her own benefit, which is kind of counterintuitive, but I like it at the same time. I'm very curious. Sakura, obviously best girl like always. Damn, it's crazy that I'm already done with season one and season two is just starting. It feels like I have like Feels like it's like Bungle Stray Dogs or Kuroko. I could have like 70 more episodes to watch, but goddamn, I am very excited. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Um, Check out that Patreon. I was I literally just got a fucking thought about uh, uh, <laughs> Ayano Cody's dad, and I just lost my entire train of thought. I'm like, holy shit, his dad, this, that, and the other, but... Don't forget to check out that Patreon. Don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.